this is your first time meeting us here at CodeJoy, you've probably met me uh, because I am usually the person on camera for everything. And perhaps if I can invite Matt on screen as well, you've probably also met Matt. <laughs> one of the other, uh, my other co-founder for CodeJoy. Um, so he and I were the co-founders of CodeJoy. We started CodeJoy back in 2019 in the fall of the, um, of 2019. That's when we founded the company. And then we launched in March of 2020, which was kind of a crazy time. If you recall, there was some other stuff going on <laughs> in March of 2020. Uh, so we launched in March of 2020 and we were just sort of immediately off to the races. And so Matt and I kind of did this, just the two of us for a few months. Uh, in uh, late 2020, we brought on Mike Cotterman, our CTO, who helped us create the website that we use for our live interactive student sessions. Um, we had the idea for it for a long time and then Mike came in and actually made it happen. Um, so we'll interview him about that a little bit later. And then in 2022, in May, we brought on our director of operations, Susan Willems, who's here as well. So she's been working with us for a little over a year now. And then just recently in June, we brought on Amanda Jean to be our director of learning. So we're going to start out with a little interview with Amanda Jean. So I invite you to come on screen, Amanda Jean, and let's get to know you a little bit. Right. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Hello, everyone. It is so great to have you all here for Makeathon. <laughs> this is a very exciting event. Uh, I've been very hard working away in the background, getting this all prepped for everyone. So it's wonderful to be here and get it all started and, you know, get the ball rolling, as they say. <laughs> Kick it off. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask Amanda Jean a few questions just so you guys can kind of get to know her a little bit. Mm -hmm. you, some of you have maybe seen her on screen. She's come on and taught a few times this summer. But as we go throughout, feel free to ask your own questions of Amanda Jean in the chat. And as we go, we'll ask her those questions as well. So mm -hmm. I wanted to first ask you, Amanda Jean, uh, uh, so you are a teacher, right, during mm -hmm. the school year. What do you teach and what have you taught? Very good question. So I currently teach grades two through five science at a private Quaker school. But before that, I worked in public school and I've taught fourth grade and third grade. I've taught both um, all subjects in elementary where you teach everything. I've also taught departmentalized where I teach a specific subject. And I've taught full-time cyber as well as in classroom full time. So a little bit of everything really. <laughs> yeah. What where was your what was your first teaching job? Uh, my first teaching job, I was a fourth grade teacher. I taught reading and writing and I learned that uh reading wasn't my subject. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean I loved teaching writing specifically, mm -hmm. but reading really wasn't for me. And mm -hmm. then I switched over uh, after that to teach math and science, mm -hmm. which was so much more my thing. It was a, a good uh, <laughs> match per, per se. So that, that was a good switch. <laughs> I, I identify with that. My first, uh, I went to school to be a middle school, high school English teacher, mm. got into the classroom and realized, dang, that's really hard yeah. to teach. And I, yeah, I, I found that I was not as good of an English teacher as I was teaching other subjects mm -hmm. like um, science and uh, math and coding. I'm much better at teaching those than I was at teaching English, even though I was always a writing kid. Yeah. W what Were you like more of a language arts kid, more of a science kid? What was your favorite subject in school? I think I thought that I was a, a reading kid, you know, and I, I enjoy reading, mm -hmm. but um, I definitely was someone who struggled with math in school. And I always loved science. I actually first went to college to be a doctor and then oh, realized that wasn't going to work out. Yeah, that's, you know, fun facts of the day. Um, I went to college uh, to be a bio major. I wanted to be a doctor and I went to Chem 101 <laughs> and I sat in the class and I took the syllabus and I listened to the professor and I went back to my dorm room and I dropped Chem 101 <laughs> and I added intro to ballroom dancing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so that was a, a clear signal that my parents were right. I should be a teacher. I was doing like a little bit of that head butting, like I'm going to be a doctor. No, I should be a teacher. And then I switched to elementary education and, mm. uh, you know, here we are now teaching teachers and working with kids. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. 
So now the the way that you and I met was that when when Matt and I were working at Bird Brain Technologies, you were like a star robotics teacher that everybody was already like talking about you. And you were so young, like you were yeah. like 25, 26. Yeah. And I was like, how can she be a star teacher? She's only been, she can't have been doing this for very long. <laughs> but that's how we, when I first encountered you, I already encountered you as like, hey, Amanda Jean knows what's up when it comes to robotics. So, okay, you were an elementary school teacher. You started out as a reading and writing teacher. Mm -hmm. How did you get into teaching with technology or computer science? Like, what was your yeah. journey into robotics and computer science in the classroom? Yeah, so I've always been, I could say, tech friendly. I've never had a hesitancy towards technology. Mm -hmm. Like, even as a kid, I was playing with the computer that we had and um, working in the back end and breaking things and then having to fix them. <laughs> so I've always liked computers and things like that. but uh, when I was a first year teacher, our district was doing a new technology initiative and uh, Bird Brain Technologies came to my school and there was a day long PD, which Katie Henry, which is a good friend of ours who works for the Micro Educational Foundation now, was doing a, a day long PD. And um, I got invited because I was young and willing to say yes to everything as a brand new teacher. And I learned you know, just right off that day, I'd never done robotics before. I'd never done coding. I was a first year teacher from Katie, how mm -hmm. to do robotics with kids. Mm. And I went to my principal and um, my administrator and said, if you get me this stuff, I'm going to do it. I, I was jazzed. It was so <laughs> cool. I had no idea what I was doing, but I loved it. And uh, I've been using robotics and things ever since. Mm -hmm. And I think when, when we first met, which was but some random PD thing at my school district at the yeah, time. Yeah. I was only like a second year teacher. I know you were, you were still so new at teaching. Oh, excuse me. We'll come back to this camera here. Um, uh, but uh, we, you were so new at teaching yeah. at that point still. And um, I know when I first, when I first met you, I was like, oh, she must've been doing this for forever. And then we met and I was like, you don't look like you could have no. been doing this for forever. But the, the hummingbird was also my entry point into mm -hmm. robotics as well I had started trying to teach with lego robotics yeah and my girls were just kind of not into them right and so then the, when we did the the hummingbird that actually was the the entry point for me as well yeah um so now how many years have you been doing robotics in the classroom that's a great question I I feel like the answer is eight years mm -hmm. if I'm thinking through those numbers correctly so let's go with that let's say yeah. eight about eight years yeah excellent <laughs> Well, I know you you kind of live in the Philadelphia area. You drove out here to work with us this summer and you're headed back to school uh, this year, but to work with us remotely this year. So yes. uh, I wish you luck in your teaching this this year. You're going to be amazing as always. And we are really excited to have you on our team from now and evermore. We'll never give yes. you up. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to be here. I love working with CodeJoy this summer and I'm excited about the things to come as through, through the school year and beyond. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Amanda Jean. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> so that's our newest team member, Amanda Jean. And now we're going to bring on our second newest team member. And by the way, if you guys have any questions um, for Amanda Jean, let us know in the chat. I'll just check in here too. Uh, Carrie Hutner says, fantastic addition to the team. Love following her on Twitter. Yes. If you guys don't follow Amanda Jean on Twitter, she's got an active Twitter and she's always posting really exciting stuff on her Twitter. So uh, Amanda Jean, feel free to throw your personal Twitter handle in the chat there. Um, but excellent. If you guys have any questions for her, um, uh, let us know. And Carrie, uh, uh, our K8 STEM teacher says, you have an inspiring positive energy, Amanda Jean. When tech issues arise, I have trouble maintaining this vibe but you don't seem to have this issue. Uh, this is a question, uh, Amanda Jean's gonna go up to, the, up to her secondary computer up here, but she's wondering, do you have any tips for the times when, and, when I and or the students wanna throw in the towel? I'll let Amanda Jean think on that one for a little bit. We'll move on to uh, uh, talking with our director of operations, Susan Willems, and we'll let uh, Amanda Jean come back to that one in just a little bit. So good morning, Sue, how's it going? We'll let you unmute here. Hi. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I lost my mouth for a second. <laughs> I know that feeling. And I know it looks like you're in the green stripey studio with us, but you're actually at home, right? Yeah. Yes. And my home is in Iowa, so I'm nowhere near the stripey studio. 
<laughs> no, through the through the wonders of virtual background technology, it looks like you're here, but you're actually quite far away. So Sue, uh, you are not, uh, you are, you have never been a classroom teacher in a traditional classroom and you're a director of operations. So that's not necessary for, for you to do what you do, which is all of kind of the background stuff. And actually let's start with that as our director of operations, what kinds of stuff do you do with CodeJoy? Oh, all kinds of things. It's kind of right now. It's kind of a catch all. It's whatever is not on screen, uh, except for curriculum building. So it's getting systems set up for attendance. Um, it's getting the system set up to be able to, you know, register people and bring people into initiatives. It's, you know, answering emails, all that good stuff, just kind of being the behind the scenes uh, person to to get people up and running so that you guys can do what you do on screen and it, with the curriculum. And you do an amazing job of that. Like I, I used to be the spreadsheet point person. Turns out I really didn't know what I was doing and you fix everything. And this is just <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and I came from a spreadsheet world. <laughs> so. Now, so, uh, so what is your, I know you have a, a very sort of diverse work history none of which involves teaching in a traditional classroom, but you have been a teacher, right? What did you teach? Uh, I taught dance. My mom is a uh, was my dance teacher and she owned her own studio. And uh, Kelsey also went to that dance studio. Did? Uh, we are cousins, by the way. <laughs> we are. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I, I had been teaching dance from a very young age, being a helper first. I mean, we're talking you know, 11, 12 years old, as, lo <laughs> as long as you were old enough to be able to like, do the thing right in front of other people, you were able to, you know, be a be a helper in class, and then that transitioned into teaching. And then I went off to college and came back and became a, you know, whatever, a full time teacher for dances when dance is only in the evening. So <laughs> but yeah, yeah. but yeah, then so it became dancing choreography and all that stuff. It wasn't just teaching what was already set up in the class. I was creating curriculum and, you know, choreography of my own at that point. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that was when I think about teachers, you're actually one of my first teachers because as Sue mentioned, she's my cousin. She's a few years older than me. And so when I was little, you were a helper in my aunt, your mom's dance studio. Okay. So I knew that you knew about teaching and what it takes to be a teacher because you taught me, which was always great. Um, but that wasn't your profession. What did you go to college for? I went to college for a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> and life life kind of happened along the way. So I originally went uh, for the sciences. I was in uh, I was going to college in all of the chemistry, and I had already taken all the math I needed to be able to get in and out of college without taking a math class wow. before I ever left high school. <laughs> so, I didn't technically need to take a math class while I was there, but it was going to be part of my curriculum. I was planning on being a med, uh, pre-med student and whatnot, and uh, life happened, that, and it just didn't work out. I had a, a particular TA that did not speak English, and I could not figure out how to make it work, so yeah. <laughs> that did not work out for me, um, but then I switched over to psychology. That also mm -hmm. ended up not working out. So psych and soch uh, was going to yeah. be a double major. And I loved it, except life in that year did not also work out very well. Uh, we had a, a, a family emergency that kind of took over some of that time <laughs> that yeah. was meant to be focusing on studies. And when I came back um, into uh, the college realm to figure out what I was going to do again, it turned out that dance and cinema was going to be what I wanted to do. It just really spoke to me. And that's what I ended up sticking with all the way through, didn't have any more family emergencies from then on <laughs> in my college experience and uh, graduated with a uh, cinema and comparative literature major and a minor in dance. I, I love that. And and that's, it's it's so interesting, the, the paths that our careers kind of take, right? Because yeah. uh, your background in film, I know you weren't, you uh, did work at a television station for a little while, right? I did. I actually worked for uh, Coralville. If you're in Eastern Iowa, um, you might know of Coralville Channel 5 or Channel 4 uh, is Coral Vision, <laughs> the, the city channel. And then uh, from there, I went to KCRG, TV9 News. 
Uh huh. <laughs> you got the headset just for it. Yeah. I feel like you're you're still channeling that. That's <laughs> Plus, now with as our director of operations, most most directors of operations can't edit video and throw it up on YouTube, but you can, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty awesome perk to having you not only organize our lives, which is amazing, but also like support the filmy stuff that we do as well, which is awesome. Helping helping Matt out with some of that editing. So it's a passion of mine. I'm more than happy to help. I, I've always been a fan of editing. Music editing really helped in the studio. So in music mm. editing became a huge passion of mine. And I absolutely love it to this day. So uh, you've been working with us for about a year or so, mm -hmm. and then we are gonna we're we're doing big things in the next couple of years. Can I ask you what is something that you're looking forward to, uh, or kind of forecasting ahead? What's something you're looking forward to with CodeJoy? So many things, all of the things. Uh, first of all, I'm very excited for some of the things that. CTO Mike Cotterman uh, mm -hmm. is working on because that will change how I do my job on a fundamental level. And I'm very mm. excited to see how that works and to kind of streamline a lot of those things so that a lot of it is less manual on my end and more user friendly for the people that I interact with on a daily basis. So yeah. I think that that's going to be really exciting and I am excited for it myself. Oh, me too. I, uh, the, this whole team just works so well together and it is just awesome to have you on the team, not just because you're my cousin, but because you're really, really good at what you do. And I'm so excited to introduce you to everyone because I think a lot of people get emails from you. If you needed to change your session at any time or anything like that, you've emailed with Sue and now you have a face to go with the name in that email signature. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sue. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. All right, so uh, we have one more team member to interview, and that would be our CTO, Mike Cotterman. How are you doing, Mike Cotterman? All right, how are you doing, Kelsey? Doing well, doing well. So you are not in a green stripey space. Where are you right now? I am in the very rough new offices for CodeJoy. <laughs> yeah, offices. They're not really offices yet. It's, what, what is our offices currently? Well, uh, it's, <laughs> Well, currently it's a garage and <laughs> soon will be an old schoolhouse that is up on a hill in Pittsburgh that overlooks actually kind of a nice waterfront area yeah. and a Costco. And a Costco. <laughs> I think that's very important. Yeah. So, so Mike, you're our CTO for CodeJoy. What do you do as CTO? I do a lot of the technical kind of things when it comes to computing. Mm -hmm. So, for example, developing CodeJoy Live that allows the students to interact with robots automatically, taking care of our live streaming server, because in order for that interaction to happen, especially when they're live controlling robots, you've got to have really low latency video, which turned out to be somewhat more challenging to find than originally expected. <laughs> and then any internal systems that we need that aren't off the shelf, or even finding those systems or working on teams to find the systems. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's going to be a field trip, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to give you a little tour in a second, Carrie. Just you wait. <laughs> so how did you... Oh, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I'm on my phone right now, so I can't chat very easily. <laughs> oh, God, <sit> on. <laughs> so um, how did you first... Uh, we, we started meeting you in 2020. Now, I've told the story of how we've met a few times, but I want to hear you tell it. How did you first come to be involved with CodeJoy? Well, it was the pandemic, right? Uh, my kid school shut down. And so I was the person in our family nope. that stayed home with the kids and helped with the the remote learning that started happening in a very rough and you know sudden way that I'm sure a lot of the people on here can relate to because they had to provide that learning. <laughs> and uh, so I took leave from my job at the time I was working as an infrastructure architect at a retirement fund and I took a leave from that to stay home all the time take care of the kids make sure that their learning was happening and I kept trying to find things that were educational and fun for the kids to to experience and you know I have a passion for programming electronics and robotics so that was where I kind of went and we stumbled upon the show that was on zoom at the time called CodeJoy <laughs> and my kids were on a lot of those shows they were the <laughs> and they enjoyed it watching the shows and at the time all the interaction was done over screen sharing basically 
Yeah. And they would take control of the screen to control a little bug that went through a gauntlet of various things to try to stop it. <laughs> and I started offering to help with Matt and Kelsey. And, you know, you know that happens a lot. People are like, hey, well, eventually the thing that really that struck me personally, other than my kids' interaction and interest in the show was for some reason, I had never really considered when I thought about robotics, I always thought about 3D printing yeah. and you know the heavy metal things, aluminum extrusion, that kind of yeah. stuff. And I saw that they made a rover out of a box. And I don't know why that never occurred to me before, but that was <laughs> kind of a changing moment for me. And I realized that I could make robotics out of cardboard and garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> too, and it's a lot easier in the barrier to entry than is a lot lower. So my kids could do it too. And so that's why I started offering to help. And then the micro bit as well, because you know, at that point in time, you really didn't have a lot of choices. Arduino was there and the Arduino IDE is not for the faint of heart. Yeah. And <laughs> rapid iteration in Arduino IDE is not something you can do because it takes a long time to compile, copy it over to the Arduino. So seeing things like make code and even the JavaScript portion and Python portion of make code at the time were, were game changing for me mm. because you can iterate a lot faster in those mm. situations. Now I've been programming for a long time, so I didn't necessarily need the block-based portion of it, but my kids did. Mm -hmm. And it gave them the opportunity to, to kind of get in there. In fact, my daughter made a, just two years ago, she made a, an invention for invention convention and went to nationals just this last summer with it that was made out of a micro bit <laughs> and some glasses and these cool things called bite valves to help kids not get distracted in school. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Her design was so cool. It was it was really fun to watch. You know, when we first met you, you weren't a person. You were a pair of disembodied hands handing children mac and cheese and taking away their bowls. Like, yeah, that's how I first met Mike. Was just <laughs> a disembodied set of hands and a, and this redheaded kid and this little girl. You know, that was, those are your two kids. And um, so that that was really fun for us to see you join as a parent to see what coding could be, right? Cause you, you've, you've, you know the high ceiling of what coding can be. Um, but then to see this kind of low floor and then to work together to develop this remote robotics website, we were very vocal in 2020. We're like, we're trying something, it's kind of working, but if anybody has any ideas to make this better, come talk to us. And you showed up to some of our meetings and you were like, hey, so you were like asking questions about it. And then you and Matt would go off and you, you guys would work on stuff while I was working on other stuff. You'd come back to the meeting the next week. And, and one day you just showed up, you know, you're, you're in Ohio or you, you normally are, you're in Pittsburgh right now, but you're based in Ohio. You showed up one day and you're like, I think, I think I got it. And I started controlling a robot in your basement. And literally I started crying. I was like, we did it. This thing that we wanted to do, we did it. And we could not have done that without your know-how. So like, I am just, the pandemic did so many bad things, but I am so glad that it led to us being introduced because like Code Joy live student shows would not exist without your weird, creative, awesome brain and your kids and all of those things coming together, like wouldn't have happened without you. So I'm really grateful for what you bring to our team, Mike. <laughs> I appreciate it. I like being on the team. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you are full time now as of what? Couple just May. Just May. Yeah. You were part time yeah. for a long time and now you're full time. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um thank you so much, Mike. Oh, let me ask you actually, what are you looking forward to with Code Joy over the next year or so? I'm looking forward to some of the interesting things that I'm gonna get to build. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> uh, there's a lot of things on the list. And it's going to be a lot of work, especially once you see this new studio space, add that into this, because I'll also be doing a lot of networking, setting up servers and that kind of thing here. So I'm the IT guy too. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Matt set up, we're going to give you a little tour of this studio currently. Matt set all this up, but I'm very glad that he's going to have uh, your help to re- attach everything because I don't know how this works. I have a general knowledge, but I really don't understand how our studio works. I leave that up to, to the two of you. And I just, I'm the person on screen. So awesome. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that too. And, and we couldn't do it without you, Mike. So I'm really glad you're with us. <laughs> All Thank right, you. we're going to come check back in on you in just a moment here. But 
Let's give a give some snaps for Mike. Woohoo! Give some snaps for Sue. Woohoo! Give some snaps for Amanda Jean. Woohoo! Um, and uh, if you guys have any questions for those folks, feel free to add those in. And uh, now we're gonna do, we're gonna try our behind the scenes camera again. We tried it earlier, we're just gonna rehook that up. Um, but we're gonna go to our behind the scenes camera. And just in case any of you haven't seen it, show you around our little studio here, because I know it looks like we're in a TV studio and we are, but also this is just a two car garage. Usually there's a, a motorcycle right there. We, we put it outside for today, but this is just a two car garage here. So we wanna kind of show you where we're located now. And then this is a special Makeathon only event because Mike is at the new space, uh, show you where we're going to move into. So we're gonna switch to our behind the scenes camera. It might take a moment for it to load. So the screen may go black for a moment, but then it'll come on screen and you guys will get to see where we are now. Okay. And then uh, we'll kind of show you how this is set up. Now, this is a, a looks a little bit crazy at the moment because um, we normally, if you've seen some of our shows, this is the side studio over here. So this is an entirely different part of our studio here, but I'm just going to angle this camera a little differently so you can look around. So take a look at this, everybody. I'm going to scooch this camera to the side so you can see that over here we have a workbench right over yonder. Over there in this other corner, we have normally Kelsey's workstation, although right now it's Amanda Jean's workstation. That's my little desk right there. And then if I continue turning this around, you'll see there's Amanda Jean. Hi, Amanda Jean. There's Roseanne. Hi, Roseanne. Black, black dog in a dark room. And here is our other studio. So you can see the, the edge of that green stripey space. Oh, the wire popped out. I'll come back here to the front camera. So as you can see, this space that we're in is fairly small. It's pretty cramped. Our entire business currently operates out of about less than 500 square feet of space. So it's pretty darn small, but let's go to Mike and we'll show you what we're moving into. So feel free to unmute Mike and we're gonna make you full screen so everybody can see. Check this out. So this is the entryway. I was sitting in that room over there but that's not really going to be part of it because that's not in the current plan. So this is like the entryway. Mm -hmm. That's the front door. Cool. Then, you know, you have your traditional school staircase in here. <laughs> and now we're getting into the part that would be ours. So there'll be a wall where this blue tape is. It's nice and cool back here. Oh, good. You can see it really is just a dilapidated old school right now. We just signed the lease about a, a week ago today, a week ago today. So all we've gotten in there to do is like sweep once and mop once and Matt has put some tape on the ground. <laughs> so in this school, we are gonna have about 5,400 square feet of space. Do you wanna go in the, in the large room to the right? Yeah, that one, okay. So over here, when we go in here, this is two old classrooms that they knocked the wall down between. You can see Matt was there yesterday taping out where the desks and the walls and everything are going to go. I'm so excited about these windows. We've been working in the dark for years. <laughs> it's so excited. Um, you know, I don't know what the name of the school was. It was just a little old schoolhouse in Munhall, Pennsylvania. And then it got turned into the Pittsburgh Sign Company where they made signs, I guess. <laughs> and then it sat vacant for a little while. So if you walk through there, there's actually behind that little wall, there's a little office to the right that will probably keep a little office. But then, yeah, there's a little office right there. And then there's even a little kitchen, which is so great because golly do we forget to eat sometimes so that's nice <laughs> <laughs> and then if we go over to those other two we'll we'll start calling them studios but they're old classrooms we'll go through the little entryway here there we go there's a classroom here this is kind of the the back classroom and you can see this is i think this schoolhouse is built in like the 20s or 30s not much has been done to any of this. I think the Pittsburgh Sign Company put up that shelf once. <laughs> There's some 
there's some bits in the floor that are going to need to be thought about. <laughs> get gets. Uh, uh, I hope you got a good view of these windows because we're probably going to cover all these up. These are uh, these windows are are going to end up being a studio, so we'll need to uh, <laughs> we'll need to block those out for light purposes. But then there's one other little classroom that we've got up at the front. Well, back. We'll have to decide what's the front and what's the back of the school. <laughs> Here we go. And this one, look at all the beautiful light in this room. Oh, it's so great. And maybe looking out one of those nice front windows there. So you can see we'll have such a cool view out some of our windows looking out over the beautiful city of Pittsburgh, looking out over the river and the bridge and actually hold the camera right there, Mike. If you look over that bridge, Currently, our current studio is like on one of those far hills over there. So I'll wave. OK, you can't see it because it's like three miles away, but <laughs> you can melt it. <laughs> so uh, so we're not too far away from our current space. But uh, do you want to show them what's on that chalkboard? Actually, there's some like really old writing on one of the chalkboards. Like it really is just a, a little old school. So there's some like names still written on there <laughs> something. It says 1909, but I don't think that's right. But man, they don't make cursive like that anymore, do they? But yeah, this is so a slate chalkboard. <laughs> oh, it's not even like a yeah, it's an old slate, man. Uh, we I think we should show them the absolute coolest part, though. Okay, all right. I don't know if the internet goes up there, but are you guys ready for the the coolest part? <laughs> okay, we're gonna go up some <laughs> scary stairs. <laughs> Very scary stairs. Walk really carefully, Mike. So there's an old attic up here, which has like computers from like the 80s or something. <laughs> like really, really old, you guys. Really, really old. Okay. And a lot of pigeon poop. A lot of pigeon poop. Yeah. <laughs> so the the I'll video. Try not to feed myself. Yeah. The the uh, I know the video is starting to cut out, but once Mike settles down, it'll catch up. And I, I am glad we're going up here because. At the very, very, very top of the second scary set of stairs is an old school bell. Because it's an old school. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> and you get a, a little pigeon encrusted view of the <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> so I'll bring myself back on here. But uh, we are just so excited about this new space. It's going to be a huge project fixing it up. But we're going to have multiple studios when we're there, so we're going to be able to offer multiple professional development classes, student sessions, things like that. And man, we are so excited about it. Um, and if you guys have any questions about this space or the new space, feel free to pop those in the chat. But for now, I'm going to take Mike's video off so that he can focus on getting down those stairs carefully, Mike. Be very careful. <laughs> And I know we had a couple questions come in from the chat, so we'll answer a couple questions and then we're going to open some breakout rooms. Um, so uh, coming back on the chat here, I know there was one question about, um, uh, oh, Carla had asked, is there a video or a guide to make the owl that we see in the background? You know, we've gotten requests for that in the past and no, there's not currently one, but it is on our list to, to make a tutorial of how to make this owl because so many people are interested in him. And actually the story of that owl is kind of interesting. Um, so before Matt worked at CodeJoy, before he worked at BirdBrain, uh, he worked at a place called the Tech Hive out in the um, Bay Area. And at the Tech Hive, they invented the original robot petting zoo project with the hummingbird kits, which I know is so popular now. And that owl, or a version of it, uh, was actually one of the original robot petting zoo projects. Was it the first year or the second year? I know it was in one of them. Do you remember? Yeah, that was the second year. The second year. Okay. So some students made the original version of that. And this is a good tie into one of our breakout rooms. If you want to see some behind the scenes footage of that original robot petting zoo, one of the breakout rooms that we're going to open up is called the EdTech Film Fest. And uh, we're going to be showing some films and uh, things that we found on YouTube that are interesting that you guys might find interesting. So if you want kind of a quiet space to watch some cool footage, uh, one of the films that we're going to be showing in there is the original robot petting zoo behind the scenes footage. Um, so you can uh, join that breakout room in a little bit. Um, okay, so we did have one question for Amanda Jean specifically, who's back down here now. Um, 
Uh, Carrie was wondering if you have any tips for the times when you or your students just want to throw in the towel, especially when it comes to like tech troubleshooting or things just aren't working. Do you have any tips for being in the classroom in those situations? Yeah. Uh, so one of the things I decided to do very early on with uh, my explorations into coding and robotics, especially because I was doing it all integrated. I've never been specifically a computer science teacher. I've always had to integrate these things into what I was doing, which was reading or, you know, pre-done curriculums or math class or whatever. Um, so I needed something more SEL oriented to mm -hmm. kind of loop into the robotics. And I found the habits of mind were really what I was looking for. So the habits of mind are these like I think there are like 17 uh, skills oriented around uh, communicating with clarity, uh, perseverance or persistence, um, you know, responding with wonderment and awe. And I would use those as my STEM, uh, STEM strategy. So I would have a STEM strategy and then my STEM skill was robotics, coding, engineering, those pieces. And every single lesson that I did had one of those two things to kind of glom onto. And that made the purpose of my lesson, not necessarily even the robotics or the coding, but the purpose of the lesson or whatever activity we're doing was the, 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 the skill or the strategy. So it was um, today, we're going to practice communicating with clarity. To do that, we're going to be continuing to work on our robotics projects, mm -hmm. but we're at the point where you really need to talk to your group members. And mm -hmm. if you're not talking to your group members clearly, mm -hmm. then you're missing the whole point of the lesson, which is communicating with mm -hmm. clarity. That's the focus for today. So by adding that element into my practice and using that very consistently over time, um, Again, like the robotics, the coding, all of those cool things were involved, but it was more about kids learning the skills they need to do STEM, right? Mm -hmm. And to be good scientists and engineers, mathematicians, technicians, whatever, they need to have those skills. And these are just avenues to get there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually what I wrote my master's thesis about. <laughs> so my whole master's thesis is about like integrating those uh, skills into the STEM piece. And STEM isn't necessarily always about science. And mm -hmm. it's not always about engineering. It's about the skills that you need. And we help students build to be ready to, you know, go and focus in on those specific subjects. Yeah. So. Yeah. I love that too, because especially with like technology, it's changing so fast. Mm -hmm. Like all of the, like uh, the best Python coder in the world uh, can't compete for volume with chat GPT. Yeah. And like chat GPT can write you Python things. In fact, Mike uh, and Matt both often use uh, chat GPT to like start out a Python program and then they'll go back and they'll fix it. Right. And so like teaching exactly how make code works and like grill and grill and what is it drill and kill <laughs> drill yeah. and kill on how make code works is going to be obsolete yeah. soon maybe five years maybe 10 years it maybe maybe 10 years but like a lot of the uh uh tools that we're teaching now are going to be obsolete even some of the topics that we're teaching now are going to be obsolete but those habits of mind those are things that if we can master those, or if we can practice those at mm -hmm. least, then that will enable us and our students to continue to grow and learn with a, a world that's changing faster than anyone can keep up with. Absolutely. You know, I love yeah. that as a topic. Yeah. And, and my, my, my advice, if you're like, what do you, what do you do when you just want to throw in the towel? Shoot, that happens. And for me, I reach out to colleagues. I reach out to people. I respect their work. And I say, I am tearing my hair out right now. What do I do? So I reach out to Amanda Jean. I reach out to Matt. Uh, my advice is to get Thai food with someone you respect <laughs> and start a business. That's what I think you should do. But, but to, to find a colleague, someone you respect, maybe they're in your field, maybe they're not, but uh, find someone that you can talk to about this. Because teaching, surprisingly, even though we're in these buildings full of little humans 
and we're working right next to somebody who's going through a lot of the same stuff as us. Mm -hmm. I found for me, teaching was a really isolating job because I had no common plan time with anyone. Yeah. Uh, I was the English teacher. So I taught writing and grammar and there was an, there was a reading teacher and we had no common plan time. So I was teaching the kids writing and I didn't know what they were reading. Now that teacher wasn't someone who I personally connected with very much, but the social studies teacher, I did connect with them. And so like, we'd have lunch together. And while a lot of the teachers were like, like saying, you know, oh, they were like talking bad about certain things. That wasn't my vibe. And me and the social studies teacher, we got along really well. So like finding a colleague who's also trying something new, finding somebody else who's pushing themselves to be like, yeah, me too. I totally failed today, but here's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Because when I run out of steam, Matt has steam. And when Matt runs out of steam, I run out of steam. So that's part of why we wanted to bring everyone together for this make thon too, to just help uh, build and support this community of educators. Because maybe your colleague that you turn to isn't even at your school. Maybe your colleague is someone you know, you've only ever met on Zoom. We went into business with Mike. He is a part owner of our company yeah. before we ever met him in person. So find find those colleagues who are trying new things who inspire you to keep going even when you're like, today was the worst. They yeah. can they can help you out. <laughs> yeah, there are going to be a lot of opportunities for that in our makeathons mm-hmm. today and in the subsequent makeathons coming up too. We have a lot of breakout rooms where you can meet with you know us but also you can meet with each other mm-hmm. and find some of those people i know that a lot of my support system uh was all of you and uh, you know i didn't always have people in my specific school or in my specific space day to day that were there to support the things that i wanted to do when i was trying so having a network of people outside of your space uh sometimes it's mm-hmm. nice to step away and mm-hmm. be like Hey, Pittsburgh friends, or <laughs> hey, California friends, or yeah. hey, Australia friends. Um, and there's really fantastic networks all around. And you have a great network of people sitting in this room right here with you now. So take advantage of those opportunities we're going to give you to go and talk to as many people as you can uh, so that you can, you know, build that network. Excellent. Thanks, Managing. That's yeah. great. Yeah.